world cities and their part in global regional economies. So let's get started. So if we have a look at our key terms, so globalization, this, um, world cities are a key part of globalization. Globalization is those strong links between cities around the world. And those links, we're going to look at what those links can be. Uh, secondly, agglomeration economies. So the presence of many people and services and industries produce productivity gains. We're going to look at that today. Uh, De-agglomeration, which is the reverse process. Shanghai is an example of an uh, ever-growing large world city. And hubs or funnels of economic activity. So that's what we're going to look at what the world cities are as part of that. So um, you can see we've got some data here from the government about cities in the UK. And we can see really just how important they are. So you can see they only actually take up just under 9% of, or just under 10% of the UK's land. But when it comes to the number of businesses, the total population, jobs, all of these factors, we can see how cities dominate. So for all of these factors, cities dominate in these areas, even though they only take up 9% of the land. So let's have a look at world cities and what they are. So, you know, the countryside can be quite a nice place to live, obviously, if you like that sort of thing. But cities are where the money is made. Cities are where things are at. So world cities drive the regional, national and global economies. And we're going to have a look at how they funnel everything through uh, as world cities are just so important. So let's have a look at this diagram. So for production, when it comes to world cities, so things aren't particularly made in world cities. They don't really do manufacturing as such. But the headquarters of the TNCs will be found in those major world cities. So they control global production from those um, headquarters. Transport and trade and business, they are key for that. So the largest companies, the largest TNCs will have their industry based in these world cities and then that money will go out to the rest of the world but of course as we've seen in worldwide recessions the problem is is that other countries may well benefit from the world cities giving wealth to them but as soon as there's an economic downturn they'll close factories there they'll close offices there to protect the home offices Migration. Now, cities are a major area for migration. Now, migration often we think of as sort of low skilled coming to do the work we don't want to do. Uh, very often, though, for world cities, this will be the encouragement of people of the, who are the best in their abilities, best in their class. And they will go to the biggest cities where they'll have the most impact. And of course, cities tend to be the places where political decisions are made, even if they're not the capital city. So New York, for example, is not the capital city, but the mayor of New York has a global political influence. So not all world cities are actually growing. New York's population has actually decreased and technology is a major aspect in this with growing technology we do we don't have to work in a city we don't have to travel into a city every time and obviously with the uh, uh lockdown that people in around the world have had to deal with with the covid19 we're seeing that more and more people working at home due to increased technology um lic's though of course urbanization is occurring at a very rapid rate so you're seeing urbanization caused by industrialization which is caused by globalization and obviously those cities start to struggle that struggle they're growing so quickly in size that they cannot keep up their infrastructure cannot keep up so water electricity trains um, roads etc now when it comes to generating income world cities actually have a hand in all of these and obviously primary industries don't occur in world cities and primary industries is the extraction of raw materials however the headquarters there's the multinationals that do control them will be found in the world cities secondary industry some sort of manufacturing industry making things again the major world cities such as london and new york don't tend to make that much but they tend to control it World cities, the most uh, wealthy cities, will deal in tertiary and quaternary industry. So tertiary industries, no product is created, but it's providing a service to people, doctors, nurses, teachers, etc. 
quaternary, very high tech, very highly qualified people, very um, high levels of money involved, lots of research and development, pharmaceuticals, IT, that sort of thing. And of course, world cities dominate in that category. So you need to think from what we've looked at to answer the two questions we have here. So why are world cities just so productive? Now, generally, the productivity of a city increases with its size. So um, as a city becomes bigger, they, people are becoming more creative, more educated people are pulled into those cities. And so the productivity increases with the city increases. So more people go there. As the city gets bigger, more people go there, have more skills, more abilities. And so the city becomes more productive. And this is what we call an agglomeration economy. So everything's coming together. And you have all of those things in one place. So you have one area where everything is concentrated. So everything can be done and it's all done to the highest ability in that area because it attracts the very best. And this obviously helps to reduce costs. So you're not having to move people and goods around so much. And ideas move around an awful lot more easily as well because people are a lot more interconnected. This is, uh, so this particularly works if you have a good government structure. So you've got to have a structure where these things work together. So everything is integrated together. If a city becomes larger and then it loses that good governance, that good management, so it loses that connectivity, that coordination, the transport infrastructure, all of those things, then actually those cities become less productive. So as they grow in size, but the infrastructure and the management, the, the governance cannot cope with it, then actually what you need to do is a drop in productivity. And you can get industries moving away from places, which is de-agglomeration. And as you can see, there's a question there from looking back at the diagram to answer. OK, Shanghai, uh, Shanghai, an amazing city. Um, this is a great video in 4K, which I can't play you now, but you can see if you search it up, you'll be able to find this video. So Shanghai is a world city and one that has grown incredibly quickly and to an incredible size. So, of course, found in China and it's on the coast, which is a particularly important fact of it. And again, what you can see here is that they've really gone for these statement buildings to make it stand out. And again, linking back to giving it sense of place. So, you know, it's Shanghai by these iconic buildings. So it is on the east coast of China and it is certainly developing into a world city and could arguably become equal to or greater than London, New York at the moment. It particularly benefits from its size. So let's have a look at that. So it's benefited from migration. And so it's a large number of people. It has 100,000 graduates per year from 60 higher education institutions. So a very intelligent, skilled workforce. And of course, that means they can then work in those tertiary and quaternary industries. A quarter of people have a college education. And so that means we can get people each year from overseas coming to this area because it's such a highly skilled, highly educated place. It is a centre for production and the surrounding areas around it is what's called an open city. So it can trade a lot more easily with the rest of the world without the same level of control from the Chinese government. And so they are set up to export. They make things to export around the world. So, as I say, it is one of these open cities that allows it a, a little bit of autonomy. It can res actually concentrate on just selling around the globe rather than getting sort of caught up with government or business. And that's led to huge inward investment from other companies, from other countries, as they see it as a place where they can set up, make money very quickly because they can produce products cheaply and quickly and sell them around the world. And we can have a look at just how much it has changed because this area used to be a swamp and not that long ago. 
Um, it is a place where business comes. Business has seen that it's successful to be there, so more businesses come to be there as well. And so that keeps feeding in. More and more companies will go there because it's seen as a safe place to go to generate income. The risks are less. So what we can see here is actually a matter of the, the city. So we can see if we're going back, this is uh, going back a few years, probably about 30 years or so. And then here we can see a very much more modern uh, photograph. And you can see just how much this city has changed in a small amount of time. Let's just have a look at this and it will show us how New York and Shanghai have changed. And you can see the rate you know, New York were in the 80s, 90s, and then all of a sudden Shanghai in 1990, and then it just occurs. This one was longer term, Shanghai, 1990, and then the city just grows. So I want you to do uh, look in at those photographs, and you're going to spot the difference and think about why they will have changed. And then we have another question. Big is best. Is actually having a big city of a large population the best thing to have? And then I want you to think about the growth of world cities. Are they a cause or an effect of globalization? Have a think about that, do some research, and we'll look at the next lesson next time.